Hi, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk mountain weather and ski conditions here. We'll start out with the sunny skies up in Jackson Hole right now, 468 inches for the season. Jackson, you've got snow coming sooner than later, in fact. Monday night into Tuesday, and then some beyond that as well. So we'll talk about that. One place it is snowing right now is in Schweitzer. They're reporting one to two inches of snow. Northern Idaho here, uh, 185 inches for the season. This is going to be a very interesting week across the West. While there's a lot of high pressure now, that is going to be broken down by a very large Pacific storm. So let's get into the analysis here. All right, so what do we got? Well, the blue is snow, and you can see where that snow is being pushed up towards uh, the Pacific Northwest into northern Idaho there over Schweitzer. But everybody else, big area of high pressure, basically just locked in here across the, uh, the Intermountain West and the Four Corners. Now, like I was saying, that high pressure is going to be broken down and eventually destroyed by late week and this upcoming weekend. Look at this monster here. This is a pretty significant area of low pressure. Uh, you can see it with the spin, the full circulation. Um, this low pressure is going to become the dominant player this week and upcoming weekend. What it's gonna do is first send some moisture inland towards, um, like it's doing now, but Idaho and Wyoming and Montana. And then the main part is going to lag back and come in later in the week. It's going to take some time before those lower pressures break down the high pressure. So the jet stream will really tell the story. You can see where the jet is aimed right now into the Pacific Northwest. That's where the moisture is being escorted. Now by the time we get into Tuesday morning, this goes to what I was talking about. Look at the jet now. It's pointed more towards Jackson Hole and also brushing parts of the Wasatch and Utah getting very close to bringing that moisture a little further inland. So you can see how the pattern's beginning to change by Tuesday, and it's completely different. By the time we get into Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, what we're dealing with right, right here is a very large dip or breakdown in the ridge, and this will support a low pressure system, which, and there's even some energy behind it as well. This will become the dominant feature later in the week and it does look like it's going to bring and look at the jet stream in Colorado by the weekend this upcoming weekend that could also be a, a major player in Colorado not minor but major and we'll get to that as well here is our future radar very dry across the Intermountain West and the Four Corners now watch Monday night this is Monday morning here but watch Monday night into Tuesday morning the blue will start to show up over the Tetons look at that so we're looking at snow, maybe even brushing the Wasatch northern Utah, the high winds, and then more so into the Tetons and Big Sky. That's that first batch of moisture that will move into the interior, and then uh, that kind of goes away. And the main low begins to move into California, and by Wednesday, we're talking about snow up and down the Sierra. Uh, it looks like a heavy snow for Mount Shasta. And then we also see some snow, not as much in Tahoe, but down towards Mammoth. And this would be uh, another nice batch of snow moving through the Tetons and the Wasatch and also affecting Colorado by Wednesday. Um, you can see the blue there. So between Wednesday, Wednesday night, and Thursday then, that area of low pressure continues to affect the West and begins to become the dominant player. Look at this arcing area of snow now beginning to take hold. So I talked about this yesterday as this is the point of uncertainty right here in the forecast. This arcing area of snow, where does it set up? What's the axis look like? See, yesterday it was more out of 45. Now we're kind of shifting it a little flatter. So that's your uncertainty. And this would take that band of snow. That's Thursday. Now between Thursday and Thursday afternoon, Thursday night, and Friday morning, look at the arc. Kind of shifts a little further down and arcs into Colorado by Friday. So not as much into the Wasatch. That arc has shifted. That axis has shifted. What's, let's see, and I'm going to take this into Saturday. Um, now, between Friday, Friday afternoon, Friday night, and Saturday, where does that shift? So now we're dealing with the main low pressure. This is Saturday morning. This is a key time frame here. Why? Because we're dealing with the main low pressure. And here it is. Where does it track? How far south does it track? There's the low. That determines where the band of heaviest snow is going to set up. 
I would pay special attention not only to Utah and how far close this band of snow gets to the Wasatch, but I would start looking very carefully at Colorado by the time we get into Friday, Saturday, and Sunday because the track, the eventual track of this low pressure is going to determine where the heaviest precip is going to be focused by the time we go from Friday, Saturday, and into Sunday. This is going to be a very interesting pattern um, to watch for the end of the week with this main low. It's a powerful low. I showed it to you. It's out in the Pacific. It's got a big spin to it. It's got some nice low pressure building with it. Let's see what happens with it. All right, so let's take a look at the, uh, the snowfall accumulation here. So uh, let's move this into uh, Sunday night and Monday and see what the accumulation looks like into Monday. Not a lot. It's all in the Pacific Northwest at this point. A little bit in the Banff area as well, Revelstoke, tiny amounts. Um, so between Monday, Monday afternoon, Monday night, and Tuesday, that's when we're going to start to see the accumulation in the Tetons. Tuesday would be a good ski day. Jackson Hole, Grand Targhee, Big Sky, that's what I would hit. Shasta starts to see some of the accumulation numbers come up, and so does Tahoe. Now, between Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night, and Wednesday morning, the accumulation numbers will start to come up as that western low begins to pull in to California, and that becomes the dominant feature. Look at Squaw up to a foot. Shasta's working on three feet <clears throat> by the time we get into that point. Jackson Hole's added a little bit more. We've started to add some snow there into Alta, Park City, and uh, Big Cottonwood. And Colorado's numbers are starting to come up as that main low begins to slide in. Look at Thursday morning. So at this point, that low is coming in from the south and is going to try and become the main feature. So all the numbers between Thursday, Friday, and Saturday will start to come up in Colorado. Uh, depending on how close it gets, the numbers in the Wasatch will start to come up. Look at Jackson there, um, up to 10 at that point. That could be conservative. We may end up with more than that in Jackson. But what I'm really watching here on Friday and Saturday and Sunday is going to be this interior portion here between Utah and Colorado. Um, to see exactly where this low pressure ends up. One more stop here on the accumulation um, map uh, into Saturday morning, and you can see the numbers in Colorado. They're coming up. So some, some big things to watch here uh, all the way into this upcoming weekend. I'll keep things updated here. Always appreciate you tuning in here. Take care and have a good day.